And that's really, truly the secret to, to make money. Now let's talk about what we do with money when we make it. You do the work like you did. Now you get some money. Now what do we do? How do we help people? I just want to stay that, stay mad shit by my shoulder because they treat me like an outcast. I ain't going to take that, stay back. I'll be swinging All right, guys. Andy Elliott, One Percenter Podcast. As I'm here today with my man, Dustin. I love Dustin. The reason why is he helps people make money. I love that. Every single one of you, the work that you put in, the hard work, the drive, the time away from your family, it's to do what? Make money. Everybody wants to be free. They want to be financially free. And I always say it's also not about what you earn. It's about what you keep. That's it. Right? And then also like what you earn and how it can make you money. And a lot of people honestly think they get a lot of bad advice and they don't, they don't really have someone that they can go to to talk about how to build wealth. Everybody needs one person in, the, in, their, in their life, not a friend. Somebody on the outside that can look at you and say, hey, this is how I can help you make more money. This is how I can make your money go further. This is how I can give you options of what you can do with your money. And to me right now, this is my good friend, Dustin. He's helped me with my money and I want him to help you with, with yours. Now, first of all, first and foremost, I asked Dustin, I like to be kind of raw. I like to be real. I said, I'm going to introduce you to my audience. What I want you to do, Dustin Day, is just talk to them like they're your family. They're your friends. You know them. We don't need to pitch anybody. Let's just be direct with them. Just tell them about financial um, literacy a little bit, right? Maybe some things that can help them. Let's bring them a lot of value. And then let's maybe talk about some people that you've helped. And let's kind of paint some pictures and, and some stories and situations in which people can understand. So whether you have no money or you have a lot right now. You need to watch this. And Dustin, I appreciate you being here, brother. Seriously, uh, let's let's let it rip, man. Just kind of talk to, introduce yourself. How old are you? And then a little bit about kind of what you're doing right now. Got it. So my name is Dustin Wiley. Uh, I was actually a plumber three years ago, to be honest. Uh, I was under houses. I was digging in sewers, and I told myself, you know, I've had two heat strokes in my life. Uh, if I go down a third time, I may be in a wheelchair. Mm. I may not be around to see my family, and that is the number one thing to be as family. Um, wow. So, to be honest, I started 75 hard. I just, one day, I was a big gaming nerd. Oh, I, everybody has their vice. For me, yeah. it's gaming. Yeah, everybody's got a crutch somewhere. E exactly. Yeah. And uh, I was kind of gaming with this one chick, and she just kept complaining and complaining and complaining. And I was like, this is not for me. I'm so sick of this. I took everything. I unplugged it, threw it in a drawer. I remember this guy on my social media was constantly walking in the rain and rucking. And I was like, man, this guy's got it figured out. What is he doing? 75 hard. So, I went into 75 hard. Day one, I'm thinking... What can I do with my life to not only make more money, mm. but to help people? Because I loved helping people. Like plumbing, people hate you. You're in their house. You're you're making a mess. Uh, you know they, they just don't want you there. But at the end of the day, they're happy you were there. Give them the bill, they hate you again. So I wanted to uh, someone to love me the whole the whole process. And uh, so I went through. This is funny. I went through TikTok and I thought, what are the top highest paying jobs for someone without a college degree? Now I have a college degree. I have a BBA. Mm -hmm. But um, the number one was financial services. Yeah. And I thought, okay. Financial service makes more millionaires than anything else in this world. It does. And unfortunately, half I'd say more than half of those people are doing it the wrong way. Okay. I know people that make millions of dollars, and they are scheming people left and right. That's completely besides the point. I got it. No, well, the deal is is that you got into this because you want to you wanna not have a third heat stroke. You want to change your career, and you want to help people. That's it. Like, I get it. Like, I love it. That's And that's why I have you here, because I think there's a lot of people that need someone on their side that's just like you, that's a real dude, that's not pitching them something that they can reach out and actually, which I'm going to give people your cell phone number at this time, where they can talk to you and just start a conversation. Like, I needed someone like that. We met. You helped me. Now, um, let, let's keep going. So, so you, uh, you realize on TikTok, highest paid financial services is it, and then what happens? So uh, 75 hard, I had 10 days to complete the uh, life insurance exam because that's the number one step you do if you go to uh, yep. financial services, get your life insurance license. Things a bitch. It is. I know. So I, I took, took it. It's crazy. Yeah, 10 days. I failed uh, it the first time, passed it the second. Luckily, I passed it like 92. So Good job, man. What I hated, You're smarter than me. <laughs> what I hated is those 155 questions and uh, uh, the exam or the exam practice at 78. Mm. And I was like, okay, well, anyways, I get into it, I pass it. And I'm thinking, what can I do? So the first thing I thought, I'm always the type of person that I look two years in advance and I mm. work backwards. And I say, if I want this, how do I Like reverse engineering. Like reverse engineering. Mm -hmm. So what I said is, hey, if I want leads, and I didn't even know what the word lead meant at the time. I mm -hmm. was literally 
dumb. Hey guys, I would love to personally invite you to come train out with me. I'm gonna be coached by my coach, Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi, June 13th, 14th, and 15th, right here in Scottsdale, Arizona. All you have to do is have train with me at least on a training course before. So if you're watching this, if you've purchased one of my training courses before, you qualify for this. By the way, it's free. It doesn't cost you any money. It's absolutely free. So what does that mean? That means if you're watching this and you've trained with me, I'm not gonna charge you anything. I want you to come train with me. I want you to come out to Scottsdale, Arizona. You're gonna train with me while I get coached from my coach, Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi. It's gonna be three days straight. This room is gonna be filled with about 500 people that are raging fans of what the Elliott Group stands for, is the core values, the standards, and winning and kicking ass. And if that's you, you're gonna be with these like-minded people and you're gonna be with me while I coach. I love you guys. It's something that I've never done before, but it's a private invite for those who have trained with me. So if you wanna to come to this, just text the number 918-210-0254. Write it down, it's very simple, 918-210-0254. 0254. Shoot me a text. Say, hey, Andy, my name's John Watson. I did buy your training course, you know, a year ago. I would love to come train with you on these three days with you and your company while you're getting coached. I'd love to spend that time with you. If that's you, boom, we'll send you over an invitation. It's limited seating, only 450 to 500 people, and then we're cutting it off. Let's get back to the video. I had no clue what I was doing. I just knew that I was good with numbers. I had 103 in college math, mm -hmm. but everything else I was like, okay at. Yeah. And I said, okay, if I want clients, what do I do? I need to talk to people. So I was knocking on doors. I was handing out donuts. I was doing everything that I could possibly do to get clients. Straight grit. But in the meantime, I was on social media. If I learned something, I pulled out my phone and I looked dumb. You talk about it all the time. Pick your phone up. Just do it. Dude, I built my business on how to on YouTube. <laughs> I'm not lying. Right. I, I tell people all the time, I'm like, dude, if you want it bad enough, you'll find it. Yep. Now, I've paid for a lot of it, but also a lot of free information. You know, most people have so much information, they don't know what to do with it. Right. But I love that. So you found the information, you started to attack, and then you you passed your insert insurance exam. Mm -hmm. You're in the middle of 75 hard now. So obviously, you're doing workouts in the morning, you're doing workouts at night, you're not drinking any sugar, your coffee's black, you're drinking water. I mean, it's a total life changer. Um, and you're getting mentally tough. Mm -hmm at this point, right? Like yep. you're building yourself to get ready for this new business. Yep. Okay. So day one, I'm doing the practice exam. Day 10, I take the exam, I pass it. Day 14, I open up my social media and I rebrand everything. I Good. delete all of my personal stuff and I say, okay, it's all gonna be client facing. Mm. So whenever I'm on YouTube and I, and I was, there's one thing that people don't do. There's analysis paralysis. What they do is they say, I wanna make money and, or I want to learn. They never do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I, I want to be client facing. I want to be door knocking. I want to be putting out content. Nine months straight of three posts a day. Never missed a single day. I love it. I took out $20,000 in loans and I told my wife, I was like, hey, I know you're a nine to five person. I know we need to make money. But whenever I spend all this money, I will say I tried. I did it. It didn't work. That's it. I got to 364 bucks and I put in my application at my old job. I woke up the next day. I kid you not. And I had 750 messages on my Instagram, and I was like, I don't know what happened, Angel, my wife, but I'm going to be busy for the next two days. So I pulled out my phone, I had 750 messages, I had conversations for two days straight, and I went from negative $8,000 my first year to 40000 the second year, which I started back in 2021 of August, to a lot this, this last year. Yeah. Um, you, so I, the, the compound effect of the hard work that you put in in creating mastery in the financial space that's what you did, right? Like, and, and that's, and that's how, by the way, that's, it's just a compound. You got your ass kicked, you know, it was embarrassing. You had to replace your old income and then now you're killing it, but it's because you're so good at the financial space. And by the way, anybody that's listening, like, I, I love that you have the courage to start over. I, I love that you have the courage to go after the, I call it the unlived life. Like you have the courage to go after an unlived life. Most people don't have the courage to go after that. Right. They really don't. They live their life, but they don't have the courage to go after the one they're not living. Yep. And you did. And you got your teeth kicked in, and it was hard. But you started to mental toughness. Like, you started intentionally do hard stuff. So you took on 75 hard. And then, dude, like, now um, it's so crazy to see that, like, where you're at. But then to go back and watch how you posted for, you know, seven, eight, nine months straight, three times a day. You never were on social media much before that. It's just so cool to see that you applied everything that you were learning. And that's really, truly the secret to, to make money. Now let's talk about what we do with money when we make it. Yep. You do the work like you did. Now you get some money. Now what do we do? How do we help people? 
Uh, so what are the common ways that you you, know, you help people day to day? Yeah, so the way I help people for the most part, me personally, I'm a, I own two financial firms. So I'm the chief marketing officer for Viking or uh, for Spectrum Planning Group mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. Viking Financial Group is my company. I'm the CEO of that company. So I run, own, and operate two financial firms. Mm. So what we do is we do tax planning. We do uh, life insurance. Can you tell me what advising. tax planning is? If somebody's watching this, like, like, let's go. What is tax planning? So tax planning is how much money do you make? What are your taxes going to be at the end of the year? So most countries, when you make money, let's say you make your first $10,000, they know exactly how much taxes come out. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the year, you paid exactly how much taxes you need. In the U.S., it's not like that. You have to plan, hey, if I'm making $122,000 as a married couple, this is my exact tax bill. Oh, wait, I have three kids. Okay, now this is your exact tax bill. Oh, wait, I have a side business. Oh, we can deduct that. This is your exact tax bill. So basically you help people keep more money, but then also understand through the year what it's really going to look like so they can plan their life more efficiently. Correct. Or be able to invest more, whatever it is, right? Exactly. Invest more Do, is the number one. Yeah, I was about to say, but most people don't know how to invest more because at the end of the year they look up and it's a surprise. Yep. Anything they thought they made, they give away, or anything they could have invested, they blew, right? Mm -hmm. So that's super cool, guys. Tax planning is something that's obviously super important. So anybody could text you, you'll help them out with tax planning. Yes, sir. Okay, talk to me about some other things you guys do. Uh, a little bit more on tax planning real quick. 93% uh, of business owners overpay taxes, mm. and it's on average about $12,000. That average. pisses me off. I feel like I'm in the 93%. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. Okay, so talk to us about that for a minute. Um, so I have a client. He's my biggest client. Um, the guy owns like 25 businesses, uh -huh. and he paid about 60% taxes because he's in California, and that's with a CPA. Um, after mm. we talked to him and we looked at deductions and based on his fact pattern of how he's, you know, he gives to charity, he does all these different things, his tax bill next year is going to be like 5%. No way. Versus 60%. All right. The second we're done, we're going to talk to mama. <laughs> Let's get it. Okay. Seriously, that's crazy shit, bro. Yeah. Number one, that's, that's not crazy, man. That's life changing. Yeah. Like, like how many people right now are watching this, they own a business and you're like, why am I paying so much in taxes? Like having someone to talk to about that, it's not like, hey, oh, wow, I get to go do what this guy did. No, it's like someone you can pick up the phone and talk to, tell your situation, you know, let them look at what's going on. And then is that kind of what you do? Make an assessment of kind of what it looks like. And then you put in a, a plan. Do you, do you kind of guide them year to year? Definitely. So depending on the, the case size, depending on who it is, if you're just, you know, a W-2 employee, it's just one conversation a year, basically, maybe two. Okay. Uh, if you're a guy like that guy who has 20 something businesses, yeah, you know, it's more we're, meeting, we're meeting every week. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah. Know, because it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's the, your favorite conversation to have every week. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. For one, it pays well for two, it saves some money. So it's an easy conversation. Yeah. And by the way, like, I want you to think about this right now. How many of you guys right now would like to keep more money? If you own your own business and you don't text him, like you're just hoping that what you're doing right now is right. But how do you know? It's like getting a, um, it's like getting a second uh, opinion when, when you go to get surgery. Mm -hmm. You know, you go into the doctor and they say you need to do this. Well, dude, like, don't you think if you had to have back surgery, you go get a second opinion? At least. I mean, I'd hate to say, okay, well, damn, that sucks. Cut me open. It's like, dude, what if you went to another doctor? And he's like, dude, you don't want to do that. I cure, I cure patients like you all the time without surgery. What if somebody could have told you that? Like, that would have changed everything. Once you have surgery, you're done for life. Mm -hmm. Like, my point is, is that I get if you have to, but a lot of the times people don't have to. Having a second face, a second opinion, um, there's a lot of people that are very educated in this world and that learn shit super quick. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I love that, that you've mastered this, this game. So anyway, so anybody make sure you message him or reach out. If you got a business right now, let's just make sure your shit's in line. Yep. Okay. Um, so you handle businesses, you handle tax planning, uh, financial advising to me is the biggest stickler people have problems with because you never know who you're talking to. Um, if they're lying to you, if they're trying to make a commission. So there's three ways that, uh, financial advisors can get paid. There's a commission through like a life insurance sale or something like that, or okay. selling a product. There's fee-based, so like you come to me and say, hey, $1,000 per meeting, we'll get your plan taken care of. And then there is assets under management. So let's say you have a million dollars into an investment portfolio, they'll mm -hmm. charge you 1%. That's ten grand a year. That's how they get paid. So mm -hmm. you always want to ask, if you don't use us, ask your financial advisor, how do you get paid? Also, fiduciary. Not saying everyone has to be a fiduciary, but fiduciary is a term stating that if I'm a fiduciary, I legally have to do what's right by you. Or I can either get a fine, go to jail, lose my license. Mm. So if you're looking for someone that you want to make sure they're doing right by you, find a fiduciary. Mm. 
Uh, we have a bunch of fiduciaries on staff. I'll say that a fiduciary is not always uh, the best choice. The reason why I say that is they're more expensive because if you're getting the perfect advice, it's going to cost you more. Mm -hmm. Now, with us, our first appointments, they're always free, always, um, just That's depending great. on which way you go. So you're you saying know. anybody that texts that is looking to understand what's the next step for them, yep. um, there's a consultation conversation you guys have, doesn't cost any money, and then if you feel like you can help them or bring value, then you guys figure out what that looks like. Right, and we always disclose how we get paid. So if I, I say how hey, get a commission, or we're going to do fee-based, or if we put you in assets, we're always going to tell you how we get paid. That's super cool, man. Yeah. I love it. Um, so financial, right? You said how the people get paid now, right? Um, what are the services? Do you guys offer financial services too? Yep. So okay. uh, we're a full planning firm, meaning we do everything from tax planning, estate planning, business planning, exit planning. Uh, what is estate planning? Estate planning is when you die, what happens to your estate? And it could be a basic, you know, a family has a house, a car. Is that like a trust? It can be. So okay. estate planning. So you decide what umbrella they need to fall under based on how much assets you think right. that they have? Yeah. So or how well protected they need to be or whatever? Depending on which state, uh, a probate could take one day. Mm. But some states, probate could last seven or eight years. So most people don't know, like Michael Jackson went to probate court. So all these people that have money went to probate court, lost half of their assets, 7% uh, up to half of their assets. Are you serious? Yeah. So the guy who played uh, Black Panther... Whenever he had colon, I think it's colon cancer, yeah, he died. Yeah. He had $3.2 million, I believe, in net worth. And by the time probate was over with, $1.7 million went to his family. Why? So it's just people don't know. You think that because someone's wealthy. But, but what happens to the money? Hey, guys, sorry to interrupt the podcast. As you're listening to my man, Dustin, he's extremely smart. He's a wealth of knowledge, and he loves to help people. If you would like his help or you need uh, a question answered, just text the number below. You guys see the number on the screen? Just shoot him a text, ask him any question you want. He'd love to help you. Guys, building wealth is not easy, but it is when you have the right help. He'd love to help you. He helps me with everything that I do. Let's get back to the video. This is a resource that I use that now you guys can have access to. Text the number. Let's kill it. Uh, so probate court, you go to court. The court says, okay, they have this many assets. Um, you had a wife, you had a mom, we're going to split it this way. Mm -hmm. Well, for one, the court's going to charge something because they have to get paid, mm -hmm. and then the lawyers are going to charge something. So mm -hmm. it's really just greedy people. Mm -hmm. On average, it's 7%. So 7% so, so, uh, of the earnings? 7% of all of the, the assets net. when you die. 7%. 7%. It'll get chewed up by court or, or a lawyer yep. or more. Yep. Okay. Um, and so how does – how do it, depending on the state, can you set it up right where you don't get stuck in probate? Yeah, so really just a simple revocable trust will get you completely out of probate court. So a revocable trust normally costs anywhere from 1500 to $5,000, depending on where you go. No brainer. That completely gets you out of probate. So if you have a million dollars or you have $100,000, mm -hmm. um, if you go through probate court, the biggest thing that I hate about probate court is everything is public now. So if you die and you had 15 different assets and everybody knows about it, everyone now. knows about it. And then collectors say, hey, you know, you had this, so now we're going to come for it. Mm. So... Uh, so you're saying if there was unpaid debts or something somewhere, if something happens, even though there is liquid, right, net, whatever, and, and assets, uh, it could get chewed up by these debt collectors. Yeah, it depends on what type of debt. Uh, a lot of debt, whenever you die, it just disappears. Well, surprisingly, people don't know that. But there is some debt they can come after it before it ends up going to the family. Yeah, so you, you talked about setting people up like a revocable trust or something like that. Mm -hmm. And setting it up right. You know, like even if you do a revocable trust and you set it up wrong, you could still be screwed. Yep. Dude, when I learn a little bit about this, my wife's like, every I has to be dotted. Every T has to be crossed. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be done right. You want to do it with a professional. The worst thing you could ever do is say, how cheap can I get this done? Yes. Like, I want you guys to understand that. Um, I have a buddy of mine, and he kept bragging about how cheap his tax guy was until literally he's paying back a million dollars to the IRS. Mm -hmm. It's like, I mean, or, you know, how, how, how cheap I got this insurance policy until all of a sudden somebody dies and there's no che check paid out. It's like, dude, like you don't ever want to go cheap. You get what you pay for. You want to find somebody who's good. You want to make sure it's done right. And that way, I mean, this is big stuff. You're talking about a lifetime of work being put into something, and you don't want to shortcut it over a couple thousand bucks. No, we had a client that we saved a million dollars in their tax bill, and he asked us, how do you get paid? We told him, and he said, how much? We said $100,000. He said, how, why are you getting paid $100,000? And I said, because I'm the type of person I just speak my mind, 
I said, why does it matter what we're getting paid? You're saving nine hundred thousand. Yeah, I'd be like, dude, I want to give you two hundred. Exactly. If I if dude, you paid so me nine hundred ninety nine thousand, dude, you saved. If I was paying a million and you said I'm going to keep five, and you get five back, I'd be like, deal. It's that, or you pay the full million. Well, my point is, it's like deal. Yeah. Like what? Like what are we talking about here? That's where people get twisted. Yep. And uh, man, but the people that are really good at what they do, that's the kind of money that they can save you. And I think setting people up for the future. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so what kind of, um, let's just kind of roll through like full spectrum. Obviously you guys do tax planning. You help people with the real estate stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you help people make sure that they're setting up uh, their taxes properly. Um, you know, your family planning, uh, making sure that, you know, all your assets can be protected. If something happened, big or small, yep. um, what kind of services like it's, products and services um yeah so we can do absolutely everything like i said we're a full planning firm so like, like is it really much into life insurance and stuff like that or is that really something that's kind of small and you guys don't really don't get much into it i'd say life insurance is about 60 percent of our business the okay. reason why is we don't do what's called the modern portfolio theory okay we do i can't think of the name of it but like do you guys do like iuls and stuff like yeah, that we or? do iuls whole life uh fixed indexed annuities term insurance so pretty much anything and everything in the everything. financial space yes like your full blanket handling it yes. and you got two firms that handle all of them yep. so anybody that texts no matter what they need you're, you're set yep. um let's talk about some dumb stuff that people do with money that they could they should be doing other stuff with it is that cool like think about this you know if 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 somebody calls you and they have I don't know, hundred grand sitting in the bank, mm-hmm. right? Um, w- what would you recommend would be the, the smartest thing they do with their hundred grand? Do so I keep I, it in the bank and keep it as cash? Um, what would I do with it? What are some options that you would tell me to do with it? I would just say it depends on who you are, and I know if people hate that, it depends. No, I like that because I think everybody's different. Yeah, exactly. I love that. That's so, good, so if I just told everybody an IUL well is is what you should do, now I become what's called a promoter. The IRS says if you promote. A certain product and that's all you spit yeah now if I get audited they can go after every single client I've ever had and audit them mm. so I had a client worth 300 million dollars he had a trust set up that guy became a promoter and now all 5,000 of that guy's clients were instantly audited mm, that's so crazy it is it is a very so so you're saying it depends on who the person is um, yes. give me some scenarios if we had you know a couple different people sitting in front of you and they had a hundred grand what are some things that you might tell them to do yeah, I would say, Andy, you know, there's three buckets. There's taxable, there's non-taxable, and there's tax deferred. So let's say you have a hundred grand and you want it liquid or you want to invest it for long-term growth. Do you want to pay the taxes now? Do you want to pay the taxes in the future? Or would you rather pay the taxes year to year? That way you can check your statements and know exactly what you have. Some people, they're like a CD guy. Every three years, I want to look up and see how much I have, and maybe we'll put it back in the CD. Maybe we'll put it back in CD. CDs, money markets, probably the worst thing you could ever do. The reason why people did them Back in the 90s, inflation was so crazy, you could get a return of 15% mm. on a CD. Most people don't know that. Now, a CD now, 5%, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I would just say, don't put all your money into a 401k. That is my my biggest issue I have with people. If you have a match, take the match. If you have a 4% match, take the 4% match. It's 100% ROI. If I put 4% in, they put 4% yeah, in. You're saying put in as much as they'll match. That's it. Yeah. Because their match is going to pay your fees. It's going to pay the taxes. Yeah. Your money gets to grow uninterrupted. And in a 401k, if you plan it correctly, you never have to pay taxes on it at all. Mm-hmm. So if I'm a single person and I grow my money to $350,000 mm-hmm. by the time I retire, don't have to pay taxes on it because of the thing called a standard deduction. Won't get too deep into it. But the reason why I say don't overfund a 401k, most people don't know the average fee on a 401k is 2.2%. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you average 7 take the 2.2, now you make 4.8. Mm-hmm. Now you take the management fee of one point, or not management, the taxes of 2%. You're netting 2.8%. That's mm-hmm. nothing. You can go to the bank and get a CD and get a better return than that. So I say all that to say the 401k, what I hate about it is HR sets this up. You go in, you sign the paperwork. Hey, do you want to do a 401k? Yeah, sure. Do you want to do the match? Oh, yeah, sure. You have People no don't really understand the full dynamics of it. Not at all. I, I had a 401k for two and a half years. I got laid off, and they're like, do you want to liquidate it? I said, how much is in it? 6000 I was like, that's it? 6000 If I'd have worked another... Uh, you know, 30 years, I maybe would have had $200,000. And if you don't know, take whatever your final balance is, times it by 0.04, and that's what your income is. Mm-hmm. You have a million dollars, which most people don't when you retire, you get to take $40,000 of income per year. That's it. You're a 401k millionaire, $40,000 of taxable income. That sounds horrible. Horrible. And most people only have $216,000 at the age of 65. That right there makes me want to vomit and walk off this podcast and go throw up. Um, can you talk to me about like, 
What does someone need to do to really retire one day? Uh, you have to ask yourself, do you want net worth or net spendable income? Let's and talk about both of them. So do you want net worth? You want to grow your accounts as much as possible. You want rate of return. So let's say by the time you're 65 years old, you want $10 million. That's great. We talked about the 4% rule. That's $400,000 of income per year. If that's all you need, that's great. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about net spendable income. We talked about IULs. IULs, index universal life, fixed indexed annuities. Uh, some mutual funds return the most net rate of return in retirement. So let's say you get to 65. If you have a $600,000 in a fixed indexed annuity or an IUL, you will get more net spendable income than if you had a million dollars in a 401k. So it's very important to know where your money is. So a full financial plan, if you come to me with a million dollars today, you say, hey, I want to retire in 20 years. If you want the most income, insurance products. That's the reason why I said our business is like 60 to 70% insurance. Mm. Because my, my mentor has been in the industry for uh, 52 years, in the industry, still working today. Wow. And he told me over the last 52 years, every investment strategy he's ever seen has never beat 50% of your money in insurance products, 50% in securities. Most people have 5%. Can you explain insurance. what securities are? Some securities people? is going to be just like anything investment-wise that's taxable at like a short-term game or a long-term game. So let's say you have an E-Trade account, mm -hmm. $500,000 in the S&P 500, $500,000 in NVIDIA. When that money grows, that's a security. You either take it within 365 days, you're going to get taxed at short-term capital gains of 40%. If you take it after that, you'll get a 20% tax of long-term capital gains. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with having capital gains tax. There's nothing wrong with securities. You just have to, and this comes back to a tax planning thing. Yeah. Um, most people don't know that whenever you take that income and let's say your short-term capital gains of 40%, so much of that gain can be tax-free. Mm. You just don't know it because you just don't look. Yeah. So you might be afraid to liquidate your account now because you're like, I don't want to pay the taxes. Your gain may be so minuscule you, don't, minuscule you don't have to pay the taxes on it. So how do people find out information like that, like reaching out to you and just really letting you see what they have going on? Yeah, and I'll tell you because I'm 100% open and honest. You don't have to reach out to me. Go to investopedia.com and just do your own research. You know, I just okay. met a guy in the hall earlier, and he said, hey, I want to find a fiduciary that's going to do what's right for me, but I also want to learn it myself. Investopedia.com. Go read every article you can. Yeah. Be, be, and then whenever you come and you meet with me or someone else, you're going to know. You're understanding. The right, exactly. You know yeah. the questions to ask. Yeah, you're educated. That's it. Yeah. And I love that, guys. As you, as you can hear as he's speaking, son of a bitch is smart. Okay? Number two, you eat, sleep, and breathe this shit. Like, you love it, man. Like, you're just... He's geeked out on it. You know what I mean? And that's what I want. That's a guy I want in my corner. Um, let's talk about when people reach out to you. Do they need to be wealthy and be doing well right now? And those are the people that you can help the most? Or can somebody reach out to you now who doesn't make a lot of money, but who's trying to sell them, set themselves up for the for the future? Do you work with both of those clients? or t We do. Talk a little bit. Uh, my lowest income family makes $20,000 a year. Good. My highest net worth client make uh, is worth two billion dollars. Yeah. So really, any so you can help anybody. Yeah. Yeah. So some people they don't have anything right now, but it's time to start. Correct. And then you build your way up. Yeah, and you know, the biggest issue I run into is people say, "Hey, you know, I make twenty thousand, I spend eighteen. The problem is, you make twenty thousand, you spend eighteen. Too many people they want to act, they don't act their wage. I know that's corny. They don't yeah. act their wage. Whenever their income grows, their debts grow, their liabilities grow. I got a new car. I want to upgrade people my house. That stuff? Exactly. So you know, I'll say you know, next year if you make a five percent raise, we should probably allocate that immediately to something. Alex Ramosi talks about this all I the time. That. If you make income, immediately put it somewhere else. Yeah. Don't don't upgrade your lifestyle. I hate to say that. Yeah. Because I've kind of upgraded my lifestyle from a two hundred thousand dollar house to a two hundred and thirty thousand dollar house. Well, it's it's part of life to get nicer stuff as you do better. Um, but you got to create some kind of cap account somewhere where this money disappears. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. if you don't plan, that money's gone because mm -hmm. we'll always find a place to put it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, uh, common objection. But, and let's just talk about this for a minute. Um, hey, I already got somebody that helps me in my finances. I already got somebody that's in my corner. I've learned that if you have someone in your corner and they're not constantly coming to you with new strategies, new ways of doing stuff, you don't have a great relationship with them and they're just a, a vendor mm -hmm. style you're probably missing out on something, especially if you guys don't have a good relationship, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so what is your thought on that? Because my main deal is, is that a lot of people already have someone. But then again, I like to say like, well, if you're running that play, 
and it's not working out the way that you hoped it would work out, maybe it's time to run a new play mm -hmm. with a new person. You know yep. what I'm saying? Uh, I never get that objection because my social media. Oh, but I just was saying. No, like, I get it. People, but they know who you are. But these are people. Correct. That, but I'm just introducing you, right? Like I'm telling them, like, look, if you want to know who I know, if you want to use who I use, people always ask me, Andy, who trained you in the gym? I say, my workout partner. They say, can I train with him? They say, hey, who does your loans? I say, this person does. They say, hey, you know, who 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 does your insurance? You know, who handles your money? This guy does. Okay, how do I get a hold of him? You know, so like I'm I'm sharing you with the world so you could help all these people. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's say someone doesn't know you, but they have someone. Um, you know, what what would you talk about? Like things they could be missing out on, and you know why sometimes it's good to make sure that you have the best of what you need. So I never go for a hard close. What I normally tell people is go to your advisor and ask them a few questions. Okay. So how do you get paid? We talked about that before. You know now. There's three ways they get paid. So when they tell you, you're going to know if they're lying. How do you get paid? What have you done with my money? When's the last time you re-strategized my money? So I had a client who said, you know, I have $400,000 with Edward Jones. I said, okay, great. What have you done with that? Oh, we meet up once a year. He tells me how much we've lost or how much we've gained. Do you know what the investment strategy is? Yeah, it's been in the S&P 500. Okay, that's great. Another client says about the same story, but he's like, I don't have a clue what my guy does. I just know I check it and it's down 8,000. It's up 20. It's down 100. That's all I know. So if, you're, if you don't want to be directly involved, you need to know where your money's at. So mm -hmm. I would tell people... If you want a little bit of advice, I can't give advice, but if you want a little bit of advice, I would say put your money in the S&P 500 and just let it ride. If you don't want to deal with people, if you don't want to deal with advisors, if you don't want to watch that ticker go up and down, your heart stop, the S&P 500 is up 25% over the last uh, two and a half years. You're not going to get that mostly anywhere else. Mm, you can lot. go in real estate, you can make 30 40%, but you can also lose everything. Mm -hmm. um, as far as financial advisors, man – CFPs, CFAs, fiduciaries, they're just labels for people that really don't know what they're doing. They go to college. It's like, you know, in sales, they go to college, they learn this nice little box to stay in, and that's all they ever do. Mm -hmm. I know people that are 60 years old, and I go to these insurance conferences all the time, and they ask questions of what someone been in the industry for two months would ask. So it doesn't matter how old somebody is, doesn't matter how much assets under management they have. If they if they are not expanding their knowledge every single day, they're behind. Yeah. So so and I've had no people value to you. Exactly. People ask me, you know, you've only been in the industry for three years. Why would I trust you over a guy I've been in the industry for twenty years? Well, shit, you sound like you've been doing it for nine hundred years. <laughs> you know, all my information is new. It's not old. It's new information. Yeah. Uh, so if you go with You're somebody, you got an edge. You're that, staying ahead of the game. That's it. And I breathe it, man. I've I have a problem between family self-improvement mm -hmm. and client facing mm -hmm. like those three things r rule my life just which one takes the most but you love it I, I love it yeah, yeah you can tell like you can tell that generally like you have nothing to sell and i love it whenever i started talking to him dustin's like dude listen andy um because i asked him i said hey dude like you're a wealth of knowledge like everybody needs you helping them with their money and he's like you know whatever you know, most people be like, hell yeah, you know, I want all your customers. No, he's like, whatever. He's like, Andy, listen, man, if I can bring value anywhere, let me know. So I'm like, absolutely, you can bring value. So I was like, dude, what about jumping on the podcast? You know, we get 70 million views on YouTube every 30 days. I'm like, dude, share some value, right? Um, you're super entertaining because you believe in what you're doing, you know what you're doing, and you're very educated, you're very smart, you don't second guess yourself. Um, you're self-confidence is through the roof because you've put in the time to study. And I freaking love that dude. Um, but some of the information you've given, you've given what takes most people 20 years to learn or they never learn. And they've learned it literally in 31 minutes now. Pretty crazy. So I just want to tell everybody that, look, if you're looking for that guy to be in your corner to help you build where you want to go, or to help you start where you are now, if your strategy isn't in place now and you don't have someone in corner in your corner, you need someone in your corner. And people say, well, what does it cost? Well, what it costs you not to have someone in your corner and not to plan it right and not do it right is more than you could ever imagine. That will give you a heart attack. So getting in with somebody, I always say everybody needs a coach, right? Um, if you're in, you know, sports, you have a sports coach. Mm -hmm. If, you know, if you're, in, if I wanted to be a speed reader, I'd go find the world's Guinness world record speed reader. And I'd ask, I'd pay them to come teach me to speed read. If you want to know how to handle your finances on, on money and everything we've talked about, you guys need to reach out to me. He's on fire. Um, 
let's see one piece, one piece of advice and we'll wrap it up because you've literally put a fire hose in their mouth and given them a ton of information to chew on. What's something you would tell them about becoming financially free one day? At the end of the day, it comes down to taxes. How much do you pay in taxes? How much do you get to keep? So it's not about how much you make, it's how much you keep. Mm. Most people don't know, and I could ask probably everyone in this building and they don't know the answer. Do you know the last time taxes were this low? 1931. 1931 was the last time taxes were as low as they are right now. So as much money as you think you're paying to the government, not even close. Is that right? In the 70s, the highest tax bracket was 70%. Are you serious? In, in the 50s, the highest tax bracket was 91%. So uh, President Reagan said, at May, I, I retired for the year. I would go back to my house and I would just chill for the rest of the year. I'd act till May, and then I made that threshold. I'm not jumping into the 91% tax bracket because I get to keep nine cents on the dollar. So right now, the highest tax bracket in the highest state is 53% in California. So you get to keep 40% of your wealth if you're in that bracket. That's the lowest it's ever been. Believe it or not, it's the lowest it's ever been. And with the way everything's going, with the wars sure, sure, all that, sure, sure where do you, you think it's going to go? Well, it sure makes you change your perspective really fast. It does. So I say that to – this is another reason why you should not overfund your 401K. The reason why the 401K was made – was rich people were paying 70% in taxes. They were like, hey, what if I made every single dollar above 70% in taxes go to the future? So I'm going to defer it in this 401k. Now, whenever I'm 65 and it's 2005, I can pay 20% taxes instead of 70% taxes. That's why the 401k was made. It was not made for a retirement account. Yeah, it wasn't made for this time. Not at all. It was made for that time. Exactly. Yeah, but still because it's been around, it's just a product that's still in the market in today's time. That's it. So 10 years down the road, the 401k is going to be huge. So taxes are looking to double by 2035. Mm. So if you're in the 22% tax bracket today, you so may if you be don't like 44. Your, yeah, if you don't like your taxes now, just wait. you better make a plan now while your taxes are lower so when they do increase, you're set and prepared and ready. Right, and there's a lot of people that give me the objection, like CFPs, uh, financial advisors, say, oh, taxes aren't going up. To keep Social Security alive, that's it. Just Social Security and Medicare, the taxes are going to have to double by 2035 or we have to complete the default. Right now... We're rubber banding everything. If I pay into it, it bounces off of the government and goes to someone who's 65, 67 years old. So taxes will have to double by 2035. Just because of the population or what? That's it. Yeah, yeah. Be because right now our unfunded liabilities are $190 trillion mm. that we have no money for. They think that there's some trust fund sitting somewhere that's going to pay this. We owe $190 trillion to the boomer generations and everyone who's retired right now. I love how educated you are. I could just let you talk about shit all day that I don't understand because <laughs> it makes me feel smarter. You know what I'm saying? He, that my wife would enjoy this podcast. Dude, she's the money person. She handles everything. Um, you know, I do the fun shit, play on the, on the front, you know, go make messes, you know, and then she stays on the back and does the grown up stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, I understand everything you're saying and I deal in money every day, but like, but like when you're the money person and you see it leave and you see it come and you write the checks and you look at the bank statements, you look at bottom lines, you look at taxes, you're that person. I'm say I'm not that person. She's that person. All that you're saying, I'm like, damn, that's, that's amazing. That person that's watching this, that's doing all that. You need this guy in your corner so you can know how to keep more. Yep. That's what I got out of all this is there's so many options and you said everyone is different, everyone. which means if you don't text them, you don't know what your strategy is because you're everybody's unique. OK, and they have to know. And I love that because most people would provide a one simple strategy fit all system, which is probably why it fails most of the time for people. And I love that you're 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 so new to this game, but you're so dangerous at information and you're cutting edge that I love you still like are passionate about helping customers. Mm -hmm. I love that you were real careful to answer anything because you're like, well, I don't know because I don't know them. But these are things you could do and let me give you some education on that because most people want to strike and fix something and they don't know because they only know one strategy. You know, they were taught to make money one way. And so everybody that calls in, they're selling that product, right? Yep. Like, yep. that's what they're good at. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yep. And, dude, uh, customers really get screwed over that way because because there is an option there for them to do something different that really plays in their favor. But 
it doesn't mean that that is it. And so you need to find somebody who's super like understanding of how money works. And I love that you understand math. I love that you understand uh, money. I love that you're super confident in what you do. And I love that you're helping a lot of people right now. So you're doing what you're having other people do. And I love that you changed your life. And so this means a lot to you because a lot of these people that you talk to, whether they're the guy making 300 million a year or they're the plumber. Mm -hmm. You can, dude, a lot of people have, have been in financial services for 20 years. They've never been the plumber. So when you talk to a plumber, when you see a $60,000, $80,000 year deal, like you're like, oh, this guy doesn't make much money. I need to find the guy making all the money. You can see that guy and go, dude, I know what that guy's going through. He's got three kids and a wife. We need to set this guy up. He's going to be here for 20 more years at his job. You know, more than likely, I need to make sure that this guy's settled. Yep. Um, so I love it, man. This is super cool. Dude, you did a great job today. I appreciate it. That's awesome. Everybody right now, make sure. Um, what is your social media, by the way? Viking Financial Group is my Instagram, and really across all platforms is Viking Financial Group. That's okay. my front. So somebody go to Viking Financial Group right now. I know you drop information every day. Yep. They can follow you. They can DM you. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, they can text you. Um, and then, uh, but so is Viking Financial Group. Yep. My website, uh, it's kind of, uh, it's really dinky. It's vikingfinancial.net. Everything that I've built, I've built personally from the ground up. Three years ago, I didn't. I barely knew what money yeah, so was. I think, I think texting is the easiest way. To me, it is. Yeah, yeah. I think you guys just text them. That's the easiest way. And by the way, like when I asked him how do how do people get a hold of you, you know, he's like, dude, they can just text me. And I love that. I that's how our company built was personal relationships being built. And I love that. Like you're like, dude, you're not going to overwhelm me. I love this shit. No, and it's me. It's not a. It's not. Yeah, a, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not your amigo taking these calls. Like, you guys are going to meet him. You're going to have a conversation with him. So, guys, I just want to tell you, man. Just, dude, so much value today. Um, I loved it, dude. I sometimes hear information, and I'm like, I already knew you were going to say that. But everything you told me today, I was like, dude, this is good shit. I could just sit back and listen to this for an hour. I got very educated. Um, so, guys, kill it. Uh, make sure you share this video with somebody who needs it. Maybe you know. Maybe I'm watching this. And, like, for me, I would need to send this to my wife and say, like, babe, you got to watch this. There's a lot of gold nuggets in here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you send this to somebody who needs to watch it. Um, comment below. Reach out to him. Make sure you follow him on Instagram. And then shoot him a text message. He'd love to help you. So, guys, have a blessed day. We'll see you in the next video. Let's get it. Hey guys, I just wanna tell you you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.